Jeb, I got to tell you, man, it's an honor to have a chance to speak with you. Of course, we're going to talk about the documentary. But before we do that, I want to make sure you know, man, that when I say that my family, fans of... Oh, we got it. Millie Vanilli. Yes. This is a BMG album that I have, Canadian brand. And in the back of it, it's also got the Girl You Know Is True Subway Extended Mix. Mix. Okay. Nice. We got a lot of these here, my friend. And as you notice, vinyl. So this yeah, is yeah, from yeah, back yeah. in the day, man. Thank you, man, for this. Thank you. Thank you. Love the background in the back. Whoa, that's a, that's a Pro Tool console, it looks like. <laughs> we do our best, man. But you know what? Um, going right to the documentary, I thought this was an amazing thing to watch. You know, I was trying to put myself in it, in, in the timelines of everything that I saw when I was doing and going through compared to what you and Rob were going through. Why right. was this the best time to finally have this documentary made? Well, listen, it was not the, it, it wasn't, it's not necessarily the best time. It's just the right people came at the, at, at this time. The universe will deliver situation. You dealt certain cards and you got to play with the cards that the universe has given you. So finally, the right person came into the fold. And when I looked at how they wanted to approach this, it was not, not just me who told my story. They approached everybody. So everybody could be like, you know, essentially finally coming out of the closet and say their piece. And I'm so glad everybody said yes to telling the story because when you listen to everyone, it's a puzzle that's forming itself up. And all pieces are coming together as the as the spectator. You look, you look, oh, that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I see how. And then you can see that step by step, you're being led to the end of what happened. And then boom, look at that. They're being used as scapegoats Oh wow! But where is uh where are the executives? Where is the label? What happened to the producer? Everybody is disappearing, but for some reason we're polarizing on Robin Fab scapegoat. That's what happened. So they could go unscathed. The journalist never investigated the label of the producer. The producer who did it with Frank Farian before, who sang the vocals for Bobby Farrell. So Millie Vanilli was the 2.0 version of his formula, his system. And he lied to the people who sang on the records. He lied to us. We had no idea. We, the, we were the youngest in the game and had no experience with Frank Farian. We signed a recording contract, uh, you know, no attorney, no managers, and nobody to tell us, hey, do you want to read the contract first? Oh, the money is on the table. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go get that paper so we can eat. And then we'll see next. So you don't think about consequences. You have no business. You're not business savvy. You have no experience, no protection. So you trust the hand that will possibly feed you and lead you to success. That is what you believe. You look at the golden records on the wall. You're like, oh man, we're gonna we're gonna succeed our dream. But it was not a dream. It was a dream that turned into a nightmare. And because the love that we never received at home that we suddenly received with the success, it was addicting, it was seductive. And then we stayed and then until, but the goal was always to sing. So how do we navigate? There's no protection, no attorney, no manager. How do you do it? So you just go, you go, you go until you realize like, oh man, it's complicated. There's so many layers. And then in order to, to feel whole, be careful what I'm gonna say, you start to medicate yourself, which is the wrong thing. But there was nobody there to protect us. So you think that by medicating yourself, you're doing the right thing. But then you start to behave differently. You start to feel differently. Your 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 mind is clouded. You, you don't see clearly. So your decision making is affected by what you do. The only thing that saved me was the fact that going on stage, I wanted to be as fit as possible to give my whole to the audience. And in the back of my mind, I thought, listen. If I, when I come from the heart and I give them everything I got, even though I didn't sing, maybe in the future they're going to say, they're going to look back and say, you know, Fab gave us his whole and we felt you, brother. So you know what? Don't worry. Come back. But the media painted a whole different picture. So me watching TV, it was like, oh, God. It was like, oh, the fans are hating Robin Fab. But when 
social media came around and I started typing with people like fans find me on MySpace, MySpace. I was like, oh, we love you. And I was like, oh, that's weird. I, I thought everybody just threw us to the trash, but I was not the case. So then we also, there's all the, the other case of Millie Guilty Pleasures. Oh, Guilty Pleasure. Well, you can all be proud of having listened to Millie Vanilli. We brought nothing but love. Some human beings were created because of that music. I mean, that's a testament of good music. Whatever happened, whatever happened, it, it's, it happened. But the music itself, and nobody can separate us from the music. We made mistakes, and we said it. We were involved. But what happened to the label and the executives? You look in the documentary saying, uh, uh, they still can't give it up. You're no man to me. If you're still protecting who, why? You, you put your kids to college, you put your mortgage, you got a good job, you're part of the Miller Vanilla team, and, and then you still, after all those years, you can say, well, you know, oh, they were arrogant. Yeah, but you ate well. You protected, you took care of your children, you know? And, and I, for me, they're no man. That's what I have to say about that. But in the end, I survived it. I'm healthy because music was in my life. I love music. I will pursue music. Be careful because I'm coming for your ears. We've only got about two minutes very quickly. And one thing that did frustrate me about this was you could sing. Both of you could yeah. sing. How do you how do you want your legacy to be remembered now with this documentary finally telling the truth? Listen, man. Watch out because I'm coming. People don't know what I'm made of. And I can tell you one thing. I, as a European, I grew up listening to everything, whether it was classical, sasa reggae, reggae, dance music. I'm a DJ. I, 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 I play tech house, deep house. So my music is a mix of everything. We're at a point now there's no albums. The album spirit is kind of gone. It's about singles. So now you can access different uh, playlists. And you can bring different audience. But my music, there's a continuity throughout. There's a common thread that travels through my music. So get ready because I got lots of it. But step by step. But you'll be surprised by the first one. That's all I have to say. Well, I got to say, this is great memories for me. Thank you for doing thank this you. documentary. Thank, thank you. you for the music. And thank you for the great memories, my friend. Looking you, forward brother. to everything you're doing in the future. Thank you. Thank you, man. Until next time.